Raider Nation, what's happening? Shill Squad, what up? Welcome to Protect the Shill Podcast. I'm your boy Chris, where my opinions might not always be popular, but the odds be authentic. 63 to 21. Who saw that coming? Stop lying. No, you didn't. Shout out to the daggone Raiders, man. Last week, or actually, I ain't gonna say last week, four days ago, it was rough. It was rough. Our whole conversation was different. But shout out to the team, even myself. I'm somebody that I love this team through and through. But after last week, I had some issues, man. I had issues with AP. I had issues with the team. And I'm not saying that these issues are gone. But, I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of things going through my head last week. Um, but today definitely helped out. It, it, it helped me out from a mental standpoint dealing with this dealing with this team. 63 points. They scored 21 points. And their points came in garbage time. And I think, not think, I know, we kind of let off the gas a little bit. We could have kept going. But one thing I will say, I did have some concerns about Antonio Pierce and his decision to not make the proper adjustments last game and i'm gonna stand by that that's one thing about me i'm gonna stand by what i say i'm not i'm not wavering from that i still think he should have made um made a change a quarterback to provide a spark and people were like oh well aiden played so good today what are you talking about chris it's not about that because it's n the vikings when they come out on Sunday, Josh Dobbs is going to be out there starting. So when their coach made the decision to bench Josh Dobbs, it wasn't long term. It was like, we just got to make a spark right now and make it happen. I think we could have done the same thing. But whatever, that's why they're on the bridge. Let's talk about this 63-21 thing. One thing about AP that I've noticed he will make adjustments. They may be a week late, but he will make adjustments. First thing that um, that popped out in my mind, um, Bo Hardigrave was upstairs in the booth. Love it. If you want to be strategic, your coordinators need to be up in the booth because they got to be able to see the whole field. They got to be able to make quick reactions assess everything that's going on honestly if you think about it um patrick graham was already up there and we already see the elevation of his unit being up there because he can see what's going on now the office of coordinators up there i again i'm never going to apologize for winning the game in the nfl and i know this was not the Chargers at their full strength, but this was not the Raiders at their full strength. Let's keep it real. Don't let nobody undermine this victory. We won. We won in a huge fashion, and we're standing on that. But I will say, I absolutely love seeing Bo upstairs. And I, me personally, I think all coordinators should be upstairs. Because honestly, you need to look at the game at a different vantage point. And from the field level, that's what you got the position coaches for. Those position coaches should be the one that's giving the play-by-play, -play, series by series um guidance to these players. It shouldn't be the offensive coordinator, because the offensive coordinator has to look at the whole unit holistically. Love seeing Bo up there. That was a good adjustment by AP. I really appreciate that. Another thing that I noticed is they were they refused to let Khalil Mack take over this game. Shout out to Jermaine Illuminor. You could tell he was playing with a lot of motivation. He had a chip on his shoulder. He was not letting Khalil Mack take over this game. Shout out to him. Salute to him. Always been a fan of Illuminor. I might say things about him here and there, but I'm a fan. Whatever. Another thing that might be unpopular, Thayer Mumford is going to be a very, very good left tackle in this in this league for years to come. 
his progression is shows. Um, me being in Ohio, I saw him play a lot at Ohio State. Left tackle. Actually, uh, he actually may have been third or right tackle. Him and Dewan Jones. I don't know, whatever. But I, I saw him a lot. I had my concerns about him. But one thing about him, he's an athlete. If you look at that, um, the Wildcat play Brandon Bowden scored on, Thayer Muffer was out there moving fools, running, full stride, just like, let's go. Who do I hit next? I love it. Shout out to Thayer. Another thing on the offense, man, I mean, shout out to um, Dylan Parham moving in the middle. He did his thing. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, the offensive line did their thing. Again, you know, you're not dealing with Bosa. He wasn't there. But you still have got to deal with a Khalil. And they did a heck of a job on Khalil. So, you know, shout out to the offensive line. I definitely was worried. Um, But overall, first time eight players scored in a game since, not, since the 1950 L.A. Rams. Think about that. The Rams have moved like, I feel like they have moved like five times since that time frame. They went to what, St. Louis? And they was, uh, I feel like they were somewhere else too, but it's crazy. But anyway, they, they done moved. So shout out to them. Um, when, when I look at this game, going into this game, I'm not gonna lie. I, I was defeated from last game. I really was because Again, I, I felt like that game was winnable. So, therefore, I'm like, man, if we don't make the proper adjustments on that game, what are we going to do for the rest of the season? Now, I'm not saying that we're going to go to the playoffs or anything. They're that, for one, we got to win out. Got the the world champs next week. But I will, I will tell you this, though. I will say this. We... We definitely have to, I mean, we, we, we got a chance. We got a chance, but we, I mean, we got to play. Now, we lost last week. I was pissed. But if we can somehow, some way, figure out a way to win this game in KC, to me, that makes up for that Vikings game where we're, we're ready to battle. Now, me personally, I want to, I care about the playoff. Now, there is a lot of my peers, you know, they, they want to talk about the draft uh, position and all. I don't want to hear that right now. No, that's just me. Now, you know, some of the people that say that, uh, usually they're usually a little younger. So they're not used to seeing the Raiders win. So therefore, their whole uh, mind frame is different than mine. Like me, like you can't just sit here and tell me that why go to the playoffs? We're not a playoff. It don't matter. I just want to get my foot in the door. Now, once my foot's in the door for the big dance, then let's let the death settle wherever it is. I'm not worried about it. Now, we can talk about the draft later. If we need to trade up and down, whatever, let's do that then. But right now, we're still in the thick of things, man. Uh, you know, we're at the, the, the lower level thick of things, but still. If we would have won last week and they came and did this this week, the whole conversation would have been different. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, to spend that much time on that. But, you know, just kind of going on to just some of the notes that I, that I was looking at. Um, shout out to Trey Tucker. Two tutties today. His first tutty. Got another tutty. Did his thing. But one thing about Trey, catch the ball cleanly. We got away with that first touchdown, to keep it real. That little bobble. I mean, it wasn't enough to overturn it, man, but you've done that like three times this year. Catch the ball cleaning. Let's keep it moving. Um, the offense. Um, this is a confidence-based game. Shout out to AP because for some reason, even after the what we did last week, this team came out with a confidence and a swag about them that they were they were going to be aggressive and they wanted to be aggressive from the beginning. I love it. 
Let's keep it going. Bo, I haven't given up on you. AP, I haven't given up on you. But let's keep let's build off what we got going on. But now I want to talk about this defense, man. When I look at this defense, and, and I, I tell everybody, because I, I love I love defense. I love watching the defensive side of the ball. I, I absolutely love it. Before this year, Charles Woodson literally was the only player that I saw on our team that would go for just the ball. Like, literally, like he wasn't all about making the tackle, the big tackle. Whatever. He went for the ball, went for the strip. Like, that's what he did. Punched the ball out. Like, that's what he did. If you look at any highlights of, of Chuck besides him scoring touchdowns and all that, but if you really just dissect his game, that dude is always ball-focused. One thing I love about this defense this year is those guys attack the ball. You look at Amik Robertson. When he comes in, the dude is three foot eleven. This dude, he he comes in like Mighty Mouse and and just goes for it all. He punches the ball or whatever. He, that's what he does. I love that. But besides Charles Woodson, uh, you know most players usually don't do that. Marcus Peters did that. When he came in, again, he he's not a big tackler, but one thing he understood, get that ball out. But now that I'm watching this defense, and again, it it could be a Marcus, Marcus Peters effect. Who knows? But these dudes literally are going after the ball, and I love every bit of it. We got all them turnovers today. You've you seen them guys come in. They want to find the ball. They punch the ball. I saw Jerry Tillery. Cause back when I used to play, I mean, it, it, it was taught. I mean, it was coached up. You know, somebody make the tackle, wrap them up, everyone else go for the ball. Go for the, get that ball out. I haven't seen that in like forever besides Charles Woodson, Marcus Peters a little bit, but now you're seeing everybody do it now, and I love it. I love every bit of that, man. So shout out to, like, I, I don't know if that's just Patrick Graham's way or, I mean, Maybe at AP's way. But whatever it is, keep it up. You guys are balling. I love every bit of that. They are turnover focused group, man. So shout out to them. Also, one thing about this daggone defensive line that I love, just watching them, at least today, they had like a balanced attack on the defensive line. So it was like they were getting balanced pressure. And my thing is, if they can do that next week, that is exactly what Pat or what um what's the name Patrick Mahomes is is not good at. Patrick Mahomes thrives on being able to do his little five step, seven step, drop back or whatever, even three step, depending on what what the route is. But if it's not open, he's good at maneuvering in and out of the pocket, stepping up in the pocket. And a lot of times, the reason you can step up in and out of the pocket is because there's not a balanced defensive line pressure. Like, if, if you got one guy really getting some pressure and the other guys are, are getting blown off the ball, then you can just slide on up to where the guy's getting blown off the ball, you know, evade the defender a little bit, and you got another second or so. But them dudes today, if you really watch... They had a balanced attack where the dude would go back wherever you went. Them dudes damn near was in unison attacking the quarterback. He had nowhere to go. He couldn't step up. If you step up, you're stepping up to them defensive tackles that are balling. John, shout out to John Jenkins, man. Oh, man, that's my John Jenkins. But, um... I don't know, man. It's it, it. This was a different feel. And again, I'm not gonna get too excited and get too overly hyped because, because again, you know, I think we were supposed to win this game. We came in, we're supposed to win this game. I didn't expect the manner that we won it, but we we're supposed to win this game. Everything I said about AP last week, um, you know, about his lack of adjustments and Aiden not playing well. 
again, I'm standing on it. I'm not changing that up. They played great today, and I'm happy about it. They're my quarterback. They're my coach. I love them. I'm going to continue to to support them. But I want to see what you're going to do next next week against the champs. That's going to impress me. Do something against them. I've been a long AP supporter. I want him to get the job. Because, I, again, I, I, I tell my friends, if we start losing, because cause the thing is, people don't realize w when you focus on this whole draft position thing, you still got to look at it holistically. Like, okay, if AP is the coach, but you still want this draft pick that is as low as you can get, that because, you know, that, that's what everybody wants. That means we're losing the game. That people will want to talk about, hey, we're ranked this, we're ranked that. Hey, we're ranked ninth or what. Okay, but if we continue losing, we're not going to be ranked like that anymore. The whole ranking is going to go worse and worse. And then when it's time to truly evaluate everything, because uh, most people's evaluation is data-driven. So they're not going to remember the, oh, well, you know, we're going to give them a mulligan for this or, hey, we're, we're going to make an exception for this. No, they're going to look at the data. From a defensive standpoint, what did you do? From an offense standpoint, what did you From a team holistically, what did you do? If you're losing these games to get a better draft position, then your rankings are going to go worse and worse. So therefore, they're going to be like, Okay, this isn't working. I'm going to bring a new coach in. Everybody wants an off, a young offensive-minded coach. Okay. I go hire a young offensive-minded coach. If I'm an offensive-minded coach, all I'm thinking about is, okay, because if we get a young offensive-minded coach, nine times out of ten, he's not going to be already an offensive coordinator. Because most guys that are already offensive coordinators that are good, you know, they're, they're going to want to be, you know, a, a, a head coach or whatever. So, okay, so we get us an offensive coordinator that was a head coach or that wants to be a head coach. But this is nine times out of ten is going to be his first time being a head coach. So, therefore, he's not going to want to be playing around with, you know, anyone else's regime. He's, he's going to be like, this is my one time to shine. Why am I going to inherit all these Josh McDaniel guys who clearly have not had that much success? Even from a defensive standpoint, us as Raider fans, we're like, hey, this is the best defense we've had since whenever. But usually we're 27th, 28th, 26th ranked defense. We finally get in the teens, and now we think we're doing something. But someone outside looking in, they're going to think we're the Raiders of the Raiders, the same old Raiders. But then some people are like, oh, well, we didn't got better, blah, blah, blah. They're not going to want to hear that. This is my time to shine. I'm not messing. So, therefore, what I've been telling people is I truly think that if we get another coach, I don't think they're going to retain Patrick Graham. For one, last year our defense was trash. So you're banking on the guy that, yeah, our defense has improved a lot this year. And our defense is good this year. But if I'm a new coach that's never coached before, I don't know if, if I'm rolling the dice on a guy that got a 50% a, a success rate. That's just me. So I truly think that you guys got to be careful what you wish for. I know you want this quarterback so but or you, you want this draft pick, but there is a lot of things that's going to snowball effect if we continue to lose and get a good draft pick. I'd rather continue winning, end up with some, some uh, motivation and high morale at the end of the season. We keep our head coach. Our head coach will likely keep our defensive coordinator. 
So therefore, we can build off of that. We're only a few players away from that being probably an elite defense. But the thing is, if we bring someone else in, they probably aren't going to have the same viewpoint as us, and that's just how it is. And I always go back to the U Jackson thing back in um, 2011. We struggle forever. U Jackson comes into the team. We're eight and eight. We I think we went from when he was offensive coordinator. We went from like the 26 ranked offense to like the six ranked offense under his watch. But the thing is, Al Davis died. You had some obstacles he had to overcome when he had a chance to be a head coach. Again, Al Davis died. Jason Campbell gets hurt. Darren McFadden gets hurt. All three of them things happen in consecutive weeks. So therefore, from the data standpoint, we didn't have, you know, the the top offense that we had the year before when he was running the offense as the offensive coordinator. But again, that's neither here or there. But what I'm saying is when a new regime comes in, that was Reggie McKenzie's first chance ever being a GM. So in his mind, he's like, okay, this is my first shot. This is, might be my only shot. I'm bringing guys in that I know and I trust. He brought in Dennis Allen. So we just got to be careful when we're saying these type things like, hey, let's, let's just go for the draft pick. Anyway, enough about that. Salute to the Raiders, man. Salute the Woods and Whiskey. 63 to 21, man. That's all I can say. Uh, a couple other notes I got, man. Um, Tyree Wilson at the three technique. That could really be something. Tyree was playing, man. The, the thing with him, his hand to hand combat is very weak. His his arsenal of moves is very limited, but the move that he has that he excels at at a high clip is that daggone bull rush, man. That 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 dude that dude is strong, man. He's stronger than he looks. That bull rush is nasty. I ain't gonna lie, that's nasty. So um, I I like to see him, you know, in that three technique. I mean, I, I don't know if I want to see him there all the time, but, you know, maybe if he adds some more muscle and adds some more strength, he could be a problem there. He really can. But just mark my word. Mark my word. Um, shout out to uh, Malcolm Coates. Balled out. Balled out. And don't let a lot of these guys tell you how, um, how much they knew Malcolm Coates was going to ball out and they were just, nah. Because I felt like anyone I talked to, I was the only one that even liked Malcolm Coates. Even when we were talking about the final rosters and all that in the preseason, people used to, to snicker and raise eyebrows when I'm like, we need to keep Malcolm Coates. A lot of people wanted him cut. I got the receipts. Don't let these people act like uh, they like Malcolm Coates. Because I, I really felt like I was on a lonely hill with that. Shout out to Malcolm Coots. You know I rocked with you from the beginning. I got the receipts. But overall, man, the, the D did the thing. I mean, they were flying around, going for the ball. My boy John Jenkins got that fumble return and took it to the crib. I love that, man. I love that. That I mean, that that, that that's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. I mean, AP had these guys playing. He had them ready. I mean, we look at um, Jack Jones's pick six. The dude knew by the formation, knew by the no motion that he saw. He didn't. He he ran exactly to where the ball was going to go. That is film study right there. That is that is good defensive coaching hey guys when you see this formation they are either going to run x y or z if they do this i mean there's different clues and jack saw it he took the coaching that he got he took the film study that he saw made a heck of a play one of the best pick sisters 
pick sixes I've seen, especially from a Raider standpoint. So it was good stuff, man. But overall, man, I mean, it was just, it was a great game. We needed this as a fan base. The team needed it. My man, uh, Mark Davis, looked like he was having a blast out there in the, uh, in, in his little press box, man. So, I mean, we needed this. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not going to get overly optimistic. You know, I want us to continue to win. Everybody who knows me knows I want to win. I don't want to tank. There is nothing about me that wants to tank. I'm not thinking about the draft right now. Now, when CBS or Fox puts that little eliminated sign next to our logo, then let's talk about the draft. I don't care. We have what? We, we were at 1% or something. Now we're at like 3% percent chance to go to the playoffs. Let's talk about that. That's what I'm on. So, man, I, I don't care. I don't care. But I really appreciate you guys stopping through, spending some time with me. Uh, make sure you guys check me out later on tonight for my Fan Talk Friday. I got some of... Um, you know, fans that I, I I really enjoy talking ball with and I respect. We're going to talk ball. It's always at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, you know, make sure you guys definitely come check me out. And, I mean, you guys got to realize, man, you know, a lot of us uh, content creators, especially the ones that just started, like I've, I've only been here since April, you know, so I'm a smaller channel. You know, you guys just liking the page and subscribing and sharing, that means the world to us. Because we're trying to fight a battle that's pretty much unfair for some of us uh, small channels. You know, it's almost like like having a small business. Like when you're like you can't small business can't compete with the Walmarts of the world. You know, so we, we definitely need that support, you know, from a grassroots level, man. So every single like every single comment you guys leave you guys know i respond right back to you i talk right back to you you know i i love interacting and engaging with you guys so you know just make sure you know if you like what i do if you know other raider fans that would like what i do just share it it's free it's free i'm not asking for nothing more like subscribe share Raider Nation, enjoy this win. We can just kick our feet back, watch the rest of the games, and get ready for uh, Kansas City this week. But as I always say, players and coaches come and go, but we must always protect the shield, baby. Y'all be safe. 63 to 21. Let's go.